What's up, guys? Welcome to the Wind Lord, Malgerac, Red Guy. As always, abilities will be scrolling above my head. Uh, but let's get right into it. This boss has a couple different abilities that you need to watch out for. For the most part, though, this fight is an AoE burn and then followed by a single target burn. Um, he has three sets of adds of three, so there's nine adds plus him. That's ten targets. Keep that in mind. However, you can CC them. Um, they are all CC-able. He has spears around the room that are extremely useful for this because they don't normally break. Um, it's just an all-around good idea to use these spears, and that's your CC targets. Uh, you have three different types of adds. You have battle menders, blade masters, and amber shapers, or amber sappers. Sappers, probably? Sappers. We'll go with that. Um, but what you need to do is, obviously, you need to CC one of each of these guys, and typically we CC two of the battle menders. That way we only have one healer up. We could have somebody just focus on interrupts, and we could burn down the uh, battle guys um, because they hit a lot harder, and as long as there's only one healer up, it's not that big of a deal. Um, you can just have one person interrupt them, and typically they can figure that out pretty easily. It's not that big of a deal. Just have one person who's constantly just burning on that target. Um, GG at that point. Other than that, guys, you're just AoEing. In this phase, you do have a couple other things. As you can see down below, you have orange pools. Orange pools, how you get it, you get an ability called corrosive, um, corrosive goo, if you want to call it that. Pretty much, you'll see it spawn on you. What you need to do is then run around the outside of the room. Don't do what we did and put it in melee. That's not where it's supposed to go. Um, run it outside, around the outside of the room, so that everybody else can kind of stay and help break out a trap, as you just saw right there. That's the second ability, is the Amber Sap. Uh, you will get an ability cast on you called Amber Sap. Two or three seconds later, it will turn you into a trap. So do not be within two yards of anybody else. Really, this if, if you're trapping other people, you're really bad because there's no reason for you to be two yards on top of anybody. Um, your AoE, even as melee, like if you get it, just move out like a yard and drop it and then move back, like, and then someone just has to click on you and you go back to your rotation. Uh, Pallies can bubble this, mages can blink this. I know those two things can work. I don't know about your class, sorry. Um, those are the only things that I do know will get you out of that without having somebody click on you. Keep in mind that you cannot just have one person who clicks. Um, you get a debuff once you click, and it doesn't allow you to click for X amount of seconds. So everybody needs to be aware. If someone said, you know what I mean? Like when Amber traps go out, it yells, if you're using DBM or bigwigs, it will yell above their head, hey, I've got a trap. I'm going to need to get clicked. So if you don't have the debuff, just go do it. Um, it's important. It's more important for you to get that person out so that both of you are doing AOE than it is for you to just ignore him while you finish something and then go back and break him out and then go back to AOE. Especially in an AOE fight, guys, what you have to remember is all damage matters because and every single person matters because of the amount of damage that they're doing. You know, if there's people doing 300, 200, 300, 400,000 DPS, remember, that's damage per second, guys, per second. So if you're leaving them in there for a four second channel or a three second cast, you've already lost a million damage because you're being greedy. Don't do it, it's not the right way to do this fight. Just stop, go break him out, come back in. That's all you gotta do. Uh, he does do his whirling blades and his reign of blades during this. These are the two, pretty much the second end abilities that you need to watch out for. Um, but during the first phase with all the adds up, it's not that big of a deal. It doesn't hit that hard. The Reign of Blades is the one where he spins around and hurts the hell out of everybody in the burn phase. You do need to cycle raid cooldowns for this. This is incredibly important. Uh, also, Whirling Blades, he throws out like the Hunter Glaives. He throws them out, they come back in. You can get hit on the way out, you can get hit on the way back. When there's adds up, it doesn't hurt that bad. There's not really a reason to move out of it. However, be aware that once all the adds are dead, it will kill you if you stand in it twice. Um, the first time it hits you will bring you to about 40% health. The second time when it comes back will kill you. I've seen it. Um, the only other thing you have to worry about in the burn phase, guys, is the wind bombs. It'll spawn underneath people. You just move over next to it. You don't need to spread them all out because you need to use the whole room as efficiently as possible. So spread out around the outside of the room so that as your wind bombs are coming, you can move them on the outside and then move them up and move them around. This gives you the most maximum room to deal with this. That's what those little white circles are right there. That's a wind bomb. It'll say wind bomb spawning underneath you. Move. That's, that's literally all you have to do is just move. <laughs> 
and move it next to it so that you can see how that one is overlapping. That's really good. That's a good way to do it. Um, that means that you're using the room properly. The other thing that you guys need to know um, is that once you kill one set of the ads in phase one, he gains 50% damage. He does 50% more damage. However, he also takes 33% damage. So as you can tell, once all three of the mob packs are dead, he's taking 100% more damage, but he's also dealing 150% more damage, which is why those abilities like Reign of Blades now need cooldowns, and why Whirling Blades needs to be moved out of. That's why it's because they hit for 150% what they normally do, which is why you don't need to worry about them when all three adds are up. See what I'm saying? That's, that's the reason that you can get away with those mechanics. Keep in mind for those ads in the beginning, also guys, mark a skull and burn on the skull, let the AoE splash out. Um, you need to understand that all three of each ad, so if I have three battle menders, they all share a health pool with each other. Not with the other ads, but with each other. So you only need to nuke down one and it'll kill all three. That goes for all of the ad groups. Just remember, interrupt the healers, tank the rest, burn them down, and then get to phase two. Once you're in phase two, you're popping hero, you're burning through this guy as quick as humanly possible. Um, there is a Berserk timer on here that is pretty stringent. What he will do is he will just start casting Reign of Blades until you're dead. Um, so it is possible if you're at like 1% or 2%, and if you have a ton of dot classes, if you can dot them up and let's say you're a pally or a mage, you can bubble or ice block, um, you can survive through a couple more seconds just in case if you're really if you're literally missing it by that much but the biggest thing in this fight guys is like I said is AOEing those ads down while focusing down each group and then once he's dead you're popping your cooldowns again you're making sure everything's ready to go save a potion and just burn this dude you know what I mean like just burn him burn him burn him as quick as you can the biggest thing that will mess you up in this final phase is wind bomb um, placement like as you can see right now we're doing pretty good like they're pretty close they're not perfect but they're pretty close and we're a little bit over geared for this at this point in the expansion anyway so it's not a monster deal um, but all you're doing is literally just tunneling into the boss making sure that when he does wind blade you're not standing in his glaives his hunter glaives that come out you're moving out of the way for those and then you're making sure that you're dropping your wind bombs where they're supposed to be and not getting hit by them if you get hit by a wind bomb or you run back through a wind bomb it will pretty much wipe your raid. Um, you can, if you can get a healing cooldown to go through it, great. The problem is you probably just wasted the healing cooldown that you need, and you might die. 